Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we actually want to discuss frames, offsets and alignments in SwiftUI so let's get straight into the video. So in SwiftUI we can size our views by using the frame modifier so let's see how we can do this on our text view that's generated for us. We'll give our text view a width of 200 and a height of 250 and we'll also give it a background so we can see the box of our text and remove our padding so let's do this now. So you'll notice now that we've given our text view this size in by using the frame modifier in SwiftUI. So within the frame modifier, you can specify a width of 200 here and the height, and as you can see, it's 250. And then what we've done is we've actually applied a background onto our text. Now, you may be wondering if you're in a situation like this, if I just swap these two around, why does the background only show around the text and I actually covered this in my video getting started with SwiftUI in Xcode and the reason why this is is because we're saying here that we want to give this text a background color of mint and that this is literally the size of our text view but when we apply a frame modifier onto our text you'll notice here that the frame of the view has now changed so when we actually move the background modifier after our frame it actually gets applied onto the bounding box that you'll see being outlined here. So you wanna be really careful when you're applying modifiers to make sure that you're applying them in the right order. So you'll notice by default as well that the text is drawn in the center of the view. So this is the alignment. So by default, when you set a frame onto a view, the content within it will be laid out within the center, as you can see here. But we can actually control the alignment, so the positioning of this text within this um, text view and where it's laid out. In news, we can actually use the alignment parameter within our frame to specify where we want this text to lay itself out. So let's do this now. So in here, we're just going to type alignment. And then within alignment, you can specify the position, like I said before. But if you actually hit the dot, you'll notice that you'll actually get a list of all the possible places where you can actually control the alignment. So what we're going to say is we're just going to use the top leading so we can see our text on the top left-hand corner. So let's do that now. And as you can see, our text now moves to the top left-hand corner. So what I want you to do is to just play around with this and just position this text in different corners and see what happens. So sometimes you may actually need to set a value within a range. So for example, you may actually want to say the minimum width or minimum minimum height or maximum width or maximum height. You can actually specify this by using the frame modifier again. But this time, rather than using the width and the height parameters, you actually want to use either the min or the max parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this now and we're just going to specify a size of infinity, which just means it's endless. So let's just delete our frame modifier here. And instead, we'll use the mix, the max height and the max width as well. So let's do that now. You'll notice as you start typing out frame, you'll see here that you actually have two possible frames that you can use. So what we're going to do is use the second option, which gives us more options, as you can see here. So like we said before, we want max width and max height. So I'm just going to delete these. And for max width, we're just going to specify dot infinity. And for the alignment, again, we're just going to specify top leading so we can see it in the top left hand corner like before. So this time, you'll notice that our view, so our frame, now fills the entire screen. So you could also use this if you want to like set a background color for the entire view. So apl by applying the infinity modifier, this allows you to fill the whole screen. But if you notice something, you'll see here that our color is actually overflowing its content. So we specified here that we want the height and width to be infinity. But when our background color gets applied onto this frame modifier, it's actually going outside of its bounding box. Now, if you're someone who wants to have this effect where you fill up the whole screen, then you don't need to do anything. But if you're someone who wants to remove the color from the, and only keep it within the safe area of your device, so, which is just this box here that's highlighted. You can use the clip modifier after setting your background to remove this here at the top and bottom. So let's do that now. And as you can see, we've now used the clip modifier to specify that we only want 
our background to fill the safe area content here. So that's cool. So we don't always have to use infinity when we're working with max width and max height. We can we only want to really use this if we want to just fill up the space either horizontally or vertically. So to see this in action, what we're going to do is we're going to add a V stack. So let's add a V stack and apply a background onto it. So rather than having our text view here, we're just going to replace this with V stack. Like so. And then within our V stack, we're going to put some text. And then on our V stack, let's actually give it a max height of 100 this time rather than infinity. So now you'll notice that our content for within our VSAC is still aligned to the top leading corner because we specified that here in the alignment. But this time we've actually said that we want the max height to be 100. So what does this mean? So let's say for example, if we wanted to limit and restrict the possible height of a view, we can actually say that this view here cannot be higher than 100 pixels. So in order to see this in action, let's just, do let's just duplicate some text and we'll see if it expands depending on how much text we add. So I'm just going to give this text a background color. And then let's just duplicate this like 10 times. So you'll notice here on the last one here that's been highlighted with the bounded box, it's actually not being rendered on the screen within the VStack. And it's like our and this is because of what I said before, where we set the max height to be 100. So this view will never grow higher than 100 pixels. You may be wondering that, hey, tons like, why didn't you just use the frame and the width modifier like before? Well, sometimes you actually want to mix and match the minimum and maximum width or height. And you can't actually do this by using the frame modifier that I showed you before, because it only has two parameters. So if I just click dot frame, You'll notice here that you can only set a width and a height. You can't combine a width and a max width here. So in order to combine min width and max width, you actually have to use the second option, which gives you more combinations that you're able to actually use. So rather than setting a max height, let's actually this time set a min height. So we're just going to change this to min height, like so. And now this time you'll notice that our VStack actually changes in height and we're actually able to see our last text view here, as you can see on the screen. So with the min height, it allows you to specify that the minimum height for this view is 100 and it could expand. So if we were to just keep on adding more views like so, you'll see that our VStack is expanding as it grows. So this is really good min height if you want to have like some kind of view that has a minimum height and you may have like a bunch of dynamic components that could be a, appear inside of that view and your view can expand and grow so that's when you want to use min height you only want to use max height if you want to give it a fixed height that it cannot get bigger than what we're going to do now is talk about offsets and how we can use them to build a profile picture view you know similar to what you see on like facebook and twitter and instagram we're going to overlay an alert will then manipulate with by using offsets. So I have this image on my in my Xcode project here. So it's just the tons dev logo. Now obviously you, you don't have this so you'll have to import your own image. And if you want to learn how to actually import images into Xcode and use them, then I actually have a video called Manage Images in Xcode that you should check out. So first of all let's actually add this logo that we've got in our assets or whatever image that you've got here into our content view. So I'm just going to type this out and then break it down. Okay, cool. So we just simply added the image. We're using the resizable modifier so we can change the size of our image. And then we're using this time, we're using a width and a height on it just to specify in this because we don't need a min width or a max width because this can't, this isn't really going to grow and expand. We just want it to be a fixed size. So we're just going to use the frame width and um, height modifier. And then after what we do is we then use the clip shape modifier to apply a circle clipping. So we get like this profile view effect that you would see on, you know, most social media um, channels. 
So I'm just going to zoom in there so you can just see that a bit better. So the next thing that we want to do to add our alert is we want to actually use a modifier called overlay. And what this allows you to do is exactly what the name specifies. It allows you to overlay content on top of a view. So we actually want to add an image view over our text. So let's do this now. And we'll also set the alignment of our text in terms of where we want it to be positioned. So in order to do this, after the clip shape, we're just going to type overlay. And you'll notice that there's an option here that says content. So that's the one that we want to use. And then we just want to hit enter. And then within here, we're just going to use some text. Say new video. And you'll notice that when you're using the overlay modifier by default, it actually positions the text in the center of your view that it's trying to overlay it on. So what we want to do is we actually want to move this to the bottom. And in order to do that on the overlay modifier, we need to specify that we want to set the alignment to be bottom um, trailing. So let's say bottom trailing. Cool. So now you should notice that our text has now been aligned to the bottom trailing, which is the bottom right hand side. So I'm just going to apply some styles onto the text to make it look more like a badge. So we'll do that and then break it down. Okay, cool. So we said for the text that we want the foreground color to be white within it. And we said that we want it to be bold. We've changed the font size of it. Added some padding to the vertically and horizontally. Um, change the background of it to back. Uh, change the background color of it to red and we've also applied a clip shape this time of capsule on it and if you want to learn more about shapes I actually do have a video called shapes in Swift UI so you can see all the possible shapes that you can use um within you can see all the possible shapes that you can use within Swift UI so what I actually want to do is I want to change the position of this badge that we have here because right now it's over my tongue and I want to show my whole face so in order to actually change the position of this, all we need to do is use the offset modifier. So on our text, if I just type here, offset, you'll notice that you have an option here where you can actually specify the X and the Y specifically. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to specify where I want it to be on the X axis, and we'll see where that updates. As you can see, by me moving it on the X axis, it actually pushes it across. So I'm actually pushing it now 25 pixels from where it was being laid out so it's moving to the right hand side and what we can actually do is use the y axis to actually push our view down so let's do that now and as you can see we've now moved it you know 10 pixels down so if we actually want to pull the view upwards we could just do the opposite of this so rather than specifying 10 we would specify negative 10 and as you can see that pulls the view upwards and similarly if we did the same with our x axis that would also pull it to the left. So now we've actually got our badge and it looks pretty good. We've got it positioned and now the offset of this is all good. So that's everything in this video. I hope you learned a lot about frames, alignments and using offsets in Swift UI. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment sections below. Also as well, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and like the video. And if you haven't already, then hit the subscribe button subscribe to the channel and the notification bell so you can get updates whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces